King Donald. <laughs> MSNBC's Rachel Maddow forecasted what former President Donald Trump's future in political office could look like. Let's listen to this. The election means one of two things, if this is the way he's going to approach it. Either he loses the election and he goes to prison, or he wins the election, he doesn't go to prison, and is that for life? that he gets to be president? Will we keep having more elections or no? If every election is a new opportunity for him to go to prison, do you think he allows us to have new elections? I mean, if those are the stakes, if winning the election is his plan to stay out of prison, what happens in that election if and when he does not win it? I mean, if Trump and his supporters see the stakes as losing and going to prison or winning and being president and probably president for life, how should we expect that he and the Republican Party and Republican officials in swing states are going to handle the conduct of that election that Trump may very well lose? President for life? <laughs> what? How's yeah. he going to be president for life? So this has been... He's going to cancel the elections. That's what she thinks. Well, people have been pointing to this as hyperbolic and the kind of fear-mongering yeah. that Democrats are using to you know, encourage people to go to the polls. Um, Let's just take it seriously for one second, though. Mm -hmm. There has been a history of various leaders across the world and right here in the United States of America advocating and successfully advocating to extend term limits so that they could stay in office longer. Um, Republican turned Democrat turned whatever he is now. Michael Bloomberg did this in New York City. He got the city council to vote to extend uh, term limits so that he could have another consecutive term in office. It is a thing that people can get consent to do. I'm not. I'm not opining on we how it is. We got it in our constitution. Not, I want to be Doug Burgum here, <laughs> without my pocket constitution, and say, sorry, you can't do that. It's constitutional. I mean, we would. It would take. He's never going to get. What two thirds of the states have to ratify constitutional amendments? Yeah. Well, people. Good luck with that. People would have thought it was impossible to lose an election, to stay in office once the election, the votes are tallied and you've actually lost the election. It is. But they are concerned, looking at how close this uh, plan was that he's now being indicted for, to intentionally create ambiguity about really the vote count. It's working, though. It's, in, it's interesting to play out. In a world where Mike Pence played along and created the, the ambiguity, remember, the ambiguity wasn't the goal. Mm -hmm. um, they understood, the, I think the quote was dead on arrival, that the fake slates of electors weren't going to stand up meaningfully to any right. kind of cl cl close scrutiny right. or review. The confusion was going to allow for them allow to them legally to kick toss it to the it states. To the, and then once yeah. it's kicked to the voting the by state legislature, to the House, the, voted right. by state in the House, then the Supreme Court is the one that opines as to whether or not that vote tally was appropriate. And given the political nature of the Supreme Court, the idea being that they, they could very reasonably decide in his favor, just like Bush v. Gore, and many people yeah. understand that to be a wrongly I mean, held Bush v. Decision. Gore was a genuine, I mean, was a, <laughs> the narrowest election ever, you know, adjudicating yeah. a, a genuinely tricky situation where we're talking about uh, like a few hundred votes that were weirdly and accidentally, but obviously cast for the wrong person because of how that stupid county in Florida made their ballots. Um, yeah, that was, so that think, one could have gone either way, you, sure. So you think, though, with the current Supreme Court we have, you were confident that they wouldn't have upheld a Trump verdict. Yeah, I'm pretty confident. What, what's the basis of that? I because mean, they rebuffed him over and over. How was the Supreme Court rebuffed They didn't, didn't want to hear any of his challenges, right? They just rejected them. Right, this is different. At the different. Supreme Court level, but this they is, rejected him. Mm, this is different. And what we've seen is the Supreme Court, we saw there was that, um, uh, Alito uh, deep dive, I think, in New York Magazine uh, earlier this year, maybe at the end of last year, that was a, a kind of more personalized insight into the public statements that these judges have increasingly been making, increasing polarization of the court, increasingly uh, bold with these corruption charges against um, mm -hmm. uh, Clarence Thomas and the like, increasingly not recusing themselves for, from cases where they are, are obviously having co conflicts of interest, and increasingly writing judgments that even conservative legal, legal scholars say strain the limits of the law, breaking dramatically with precedent, including precedent of other conservatives of, of yesteryear. So, I mean, I mean I, the Supreme Court routinely does rule against 
Um, it, it, it does sometimes rebuff uh, conservative influence. All right, so it sometimes rebuffs a conservative influence is the kind of ambiguity that makes someone like Rachel Maddow, understandably, I think, not in the, in the, in the perhaps in the context of uh, uh, extending term mm -hmm. limits, but in the context of generally, generally being able to steal elections, tweak outcomes makes people not ex especially confident that the Supreme Court is going to be a last bulwark in favor of democracy. Are you willing to roll the dice on that sort of thing? I think, I, I really do think this most recent well, indictment- I'm not, I mean, I'm not a supporter of Trump, but I'm, I also do trust in the institution of the Supreme Court Oof. to prevent his installation as permanent dictator, in fact. It's, it's funny because after 1-6, there was this mockery of the idea that Trump could really actually steal the election. Um, and that a characterization of liberals as being histrionic because they were like, well, politics doesn't work like that. Just because I have possession of Congress right. with a mob, it doesn't mean that that magically makes Donald Trump president. And of course that's true. And there was this a t a suggestion that as various aspects of that day got debunked, oh, they didn't really have zip ties, for instance. That was more and more evidence that there was no real danger of the of the election being overturned. Right. I mean, there, 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 really... was, there was no real danger of the right. of but, the but, but riot but causing the election. This, is, this yeah. is exactly the point that I'm trying to get to. Yeah. But for and that months, was emphasized by liberals. But, but for months, it was, well, the liberals were wrong about the zip ties. The liberals were wrong about how many people had weapons. The liberals were wrong about who instigated this. Trump has plausible deniability. He said to protest peacefully. Therefore, there was no real risk. What we are now finally getting to, mm -hmm. with the context of the specific indictment claims, is that it wasn't about 1-6. And when you look at all of the weeks leading up to 1-6, where, during which Trump and the co-conspirators were allegedly forging documents and um, you know, squeezing election officials and, and doing all of the kinds of things that now have, these RICO, uh, have amounted to these RICO charges, I'm, I'm sorry, it does seem like Donald, uh, Mike Pence played a really pivotal role in preventing things from going over the edge. Well, I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay his role in that, but it, it I mean, the transition happened with all the usual fanfare, lack of, uh, it, was, it was not surprising it happened. And, you know, everyone involved in this effort is now being, like, exhaustively prosecuted, right? Um, no, but they didn't get off scot-free. Trump and all the co-conspirators, they're now going to face legal proceedings over and over again. It's not like, oh, we almost pulled it off. Better luck next time. Next time we'll have a better but, strategy. But, Robbie, saying two years later they're being indicted, great. On the, at the time it happened, we were close. We now know, I mean, I think this, a lot of this stuff came out during the 1-6 commission, but it was just not, uh, 1-6 hearings, but it wasn't emphasized. We now know that if Pence had agreed with the plan, if, if Pence had gone along with the memo that outlined this, uh, outlined this plan, at very least, we would have been in a situation where probably through the proposed inauguration date and all of that, mm -hmm. we were still working through the reality of the situation. There were, there's a significant- what do you mean, How do we know that? We, we, we literally don't know. That's the point that I'm making, but it's okay. a possibility. The fact that there is a non-zero chance that there would have been ongoing discussion about whether or not Joe Biden was duly elected because Mike Pence and this alternative reality said, no, this, this, the House gets to Biden vote and the House votes for it. immediately followed suit, uh, filed suit. Yeah, and now we're at the Supreme said, Court. This is the yeah, entire and point. And what the Supreme Court got- Joe Biden is the president. I, 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 don't, I really don't know how you can say that with confidence. I really don't know how you can say that with confidence, because we never should have been in that. We never should get to that point. And but well, for Mike that's Pence, fine. You can say we never should get to that point. We would we would have gotten to that point. We had fully fraudulent, lying groups of people who who made fake documents, lying about what the vote, vote totals that were were in their and state. And to the extent they did that, they're going to go to prison. Knowingly false, like knowingly false. And they were told this. Some of these people were like told only if the court judgments in those states turn up some fraud will I agree to this document being submitted, knowing that there was no evidence at the time. But saying, okay, fine, if it if it comes out, then I'll put my name to this document, and then had it submitted anyway against their wishes. So there's a fraud upon some of these conservative co-conspirators who were like in the wrong, but not necessarily willing to commit full hog to election mm -hmm. overturning. Like, th this is the context that we're in. So the idea that, like, oh, that's a bridge too far, that kind of claim is histrionic. Like, I agree that, that Rachel Maddow is overstepping here. But this is the world. I, I don't want to pretend like her hysteria doesn't have some basis in reality because of the way that certain Republicans in leadership 
have behaved. And only because of the integrity of certain other conservatives in leadership, including many members of Trump's DOJ, who were telling him full-throatedly that he was wrong about these uh, election claims, did we not end up in this ambiguous alternative reality. Mm. I don't think that alternative reality was very likely, but obviously we can't know. What, what percent of Republicans still believe that the that, but that doesn't do, that matter Biden for wasn't. the process? The process is the process. I'm making a different point. So, what percentage of a, a Republican? I think it's a, a majority of Republicans, or close to half, that still think that well, the election lot, was but, stolen. I mean, from Trump. there are Democratic top at the top is, at the, the highest level who think Hillary Clinton and Stacey okay. Abrams and other people. So just, their belief in it is not. That, that's fine. The point is here. It is. Um, Percentage of Republicans who think Biden's 2020 win was Ill illegitimate ticks back up to near 70 percent. This is yeah. a poll from August 3rd. I mean, 70%. Poll, right, poll Democrats in January of 2016. So this is the question. If Imagine mm. if it had even gotten farther and if there had been a vote in the House that corroborated that Donald Trump won, how much that would have shored up these beliefs. Now imagine a world where Donald Trump is saying that the election was stolen from me. What kind of public support can he get to continue to stay in office? I mean, that's that's where people are going with this. When you have the masses of the public, I mean, Republicans believing who a lie, commit to that messaging can't even get elected in in districts that are held by Republicans in states that vote Republican. So I don't understand how you can attribute that to simply election denialism when Donald Trump, the the king of election denialism, is polling at forty odd points ahead of everybody else in the in the race, and also even though he wasn't even there on the debate stage, managed to peer pressure almost everybody on the stage into agreeing that he's the the, the subject a, of an unfair political prosecution. But it's a general election liability. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's a huge general election liability. We'll have more rising right after this.